Hello and welcome everyone to yet another interesting episode of Polity Primer. My name is Pragya and today we are going to discuss a very important topic which often remains in the news. The title of our today's discussion is Promulgation and Repromulgation of Ordinances. In this discussion, we will firstly ponder upon what are ordinances, then we are also going to see ordinance making power in India, then we are also going to see that can ordinances be withdrawn by the parliament. We are also going to see the circumstances or going to, to try to find an answer to the question that can ordinances be repromulgated. And in the end, we are going to see a practice question for a prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination. So, if I talk about the background of our today's topic, ordinance uh, says or the ordinance making power is often in the news and our constitution makers were very far sighted. So, they gave this unique power to the executive that okay in the emergency situations when the parliament is not in session and hence cannot act with ordinary law you can promulgate ordinances so this brings us to the moot question of our today's discussion that what are ordinances so if in simple terms if i try to explain you what are ordinances it is simply a law normal law in india the legis uh, law making power or the legislative power is there in the hands of the legislature. Okay, but in certain emergency situations, in certain unforeseeable situations, the founding fathers granted this uh, power to the central executive or the state executive as well, so as they can uh, redress the si uh, situation Im immediately and they can make laws for shorter duration of time. So, ordinance is a law that can introduce legislative changes. The Supreme Court has clarified that the legislative power to issue ordinances is in the nature of an emergency power given to the executive only to meet an emergency situation. So, this is what I was explaining to you that yes, our founding fathers were cognizant of this fact that yes, there are certain situations that need immediate redressal and that is why it was uh, this ordinance making power was given to the executive so as to redress those urgent situations immediately. It is a law and uh, they can uh, make laws for a very short period of time to redress some emergency situation. See, this ordinance making power of the executive is not a parallel power of legislation. Why I am saying so? Because an ordinance cannot be promulgated when the parliament is in session parliament is in session ok. So, if either house of the parliament is in session or both the houses of the parliament in session are in session then you cannot promulgate ordinance and that is why it is not a parallel legislative power. It is only an emergency power given in the hands of the central executive and this is also been clarified by the Supreme Court of India. Now, let us understand that who has the ordinance making power in India. So, if I talk about India, the president of India under article 123 and the governor of a state under article 213. So, you can easily remember it 123 and 213 are empowered empower to promulgate ordinances. So, article 123 of the constitution of India grants the president certain law making powers to promulgate ordinances when either of the two houses of parliament is not in the session and only in urgent situations, ok. When an ordinance is promulgated, but the legislative session is yet to commence, the ordinance remain in effect as law. So, as I was explaining to you also that this is a law, this can make a, a legislative change. So, ordinance is law and usually it happens when the parliament is not in session. It has the same force and effect as an act of the legislature. So, this casts two obligations or the two limitations on the ordinance. The first thing is point number A, the executive can only act on the subjects on which it has direct law making power. If in the case of union executive, then the union list or the concurrent list as a residuary power. If in the case of state government, then only on the state list. So, you can only promulgate ordinances on the subjects on which you have law making power. Secondly, as it has the same force and effect as an act of the parliament, 
So, you will have the same limitations on an ordinary law that you cannot breach the constitution or you cannot violate the constitution and you cannot take away the fundamental rights by promulgating an ordinance. So, these are the two limitations, important limitations on the ordinance making power. Let us analyze what are some other limitations on the ordinance making power, ok. So, the president can promulgate an ordinance only when both the houses of parliament are not in session or when either of the two houses of parliament is not in session. So, this is what I was explaining to you that this is not a parallel legislative power. It can only be exercised in emergency situation. That is why the ordinance that is promulgated when both the houses of the parliament in, are in session, it is completely declared as void. You cannot do so. It is not a parallel lawmaking power given to the executive. Okay. An ordinance can also be issued when only one house is in session because a law can be passed by both the houses and not by one house alone. So, this can happen that ordinance may be issued when one house in the session because for law, we have understood how a bill becomes a law. Firstly, a bill will be introduced, it will be deliberated in one house of the parliament, then it will be deliberated in another house of the parliament and then by receiving the president's assent, it will become a law. So, same is the case with the ordinance also, as ordinance is also a law, so you can promulgate it when one of the houses is not in session. Then the president can make an ordinance only when he is satisfied that the circumstances exist that render it necessary for him to take immediate action. So, and uh, the satisfaction of the president can be called before a court of law and then he can be asked to prove that, okay, show us the urgency of the situation and this has been provided by the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act that yes, you can question the satisfaction of the president in a court of a law, okay. So, uh, as it is an emergency power, so you will have to prove the emergency if it is shown that the power were exercised malafidely. Moving further, the ordinance making power of the president is co-extensive as regards all matters except duration with the law making powers of the parliament. That means, he has the all of the uh, power that is given to a normal legislative uh, in case of a law making power, but he cannot exercise this power until and unless there is an emergency situation and he cannot exercise this power parallelly to the law making power of the parliament. Every ordinance issued by the president during the recess of the parliament must be laid before both the houses of the parliament when it reassembles. So, what is the duration of the ordinance? Now, you can ask me ma'am, what is exactly is the duration of the ordinance? So, the duration of the ordinance can be from 6 weeks to 6 months. So, this can be the duration of the ordinance from 6 weeks to 6 months. If the ordinance is approved by both the houses, it becomes an act and if the parliament is not acting on the uh, ordinance, then definitely it can expire in 6 weeks. It can also expire earlier than the 6 weeks if both the houses of the parliament after reassembly decide that, okay, this ordinance has to be withdrawn. So, it can expire earlier also if a resolution is passed by the parliament removing its effect. An ordinance as a normal legislation is retrospective in nature. So, whatever act you have done through the ordinance till the time it has expired, they remain completely valid. So, the ideal duration is 6 weeks or 6 months because, why 6 months? Because the duration of the summoning of both the houses of the parliament, they sit together within a period of 6 months and that is why it can sustain for 6 months until and unless it is not withdrawn or not resisted by the or not diluted by the parliament. And if there is a case that ordinance is rejected, it means that the government has lost majority. So, these were the limitations on the ordinance making power. Moving forward, let us discuss the withdrawal of the ordinance. We have seen that an ordinance can expire earlier than 6 weeks also or the parliament may also withdraw the ordinance. So, the president can also withdraw the, an ordinance at any time. However, his power of ordinance making is not a discretionary power and he can 
promulgate or withdraw an ordinance only on the advice of the council of ministers headed by the prime minister and that is why i am saying that this is not a discretionary power of the president if you talk about the indian constitution president cannot act without the concurrence of the uh, council of ministers or without the advice of the council of ministers so if the council of ministers advise the president that okay withdraw this ordinance then definitely the ordinance can be withdrawn the ordinance can also be voted out like it can also be made to expire if the parliament decides that no we are not going to act on it so at the end of the six weeks period it it will automatically expire now let us discuss the re-promulgation of ordinance this re-promulgation of ordinance often remains in the controversy so let us see what is re-promulgation of the ordinance so when an ordinance lapses the government can choose to re-promulgate it if necessary so the emergency situation of which the redressal was sought by the executive by making an ordinance exists at the time then of definitely they can decide to re-promulgate the ordinance okay in a 2017 case the supreme court ruled that repeated re-promulgations without legislative consideration would be unconstitutional and a violations of the legislature's role so in this case let us study a landmark judgment known as the dc vadhwa versus state of bihar okay so this is a landmark case which deals with the re-promulgation of ordinance 256 ordinances were kept alive or were issued during a certain time period by the governor of Bihar and this was challenged in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said that no, ordinance making power is not a normal legislative power. You cannot go on re-promulgating the ordinances with the same text. You will have to put it down before the houses when they reassemble. Re-promulgation of ordinances at your whims and fancies is not allowed. This is violation of the constitution. So you just cannot keep on re-promulgating the ordinances as per your whims and fancies. So this is a very landmark case in this regard in which the Supreme Court said that, okay, you cannot... Uh, uh, you know, substitute the law making power of the legislature by promulgating an ordinances and you just cannot keep on re-promulgating the ordinances with the same text without subjecting it to the uh, vote of the uh, houses of the uh, legis state legislature. So, this was held by the Supreme Court in the DC Vadva case. The court emphasized that the power to issue an ordinance should be treated as an emergency measure only and not as a means to bypass the legislature. So this this is also this was also held in the DC Vadba case and recent cases also the Supreme Court has clarified that no repromulgation cannot happen again and again again and again you'll have to put the ordinance to vote or you'll have to let it expire repromulgation can only happen when the emergency situation for which you are seeking and redressal remains in force and you have to definitely put the ordinance before the houses of the parliament once they reassemble or they will expire after six weeks so this was held in the by the supreme court in these landmark judgments that no no automatic repromulgation can be allowed apart from emergency situations with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion we have seen what are ordinances we have seen that what are the limitations on the power to promulgate ordinances. Then we have also seen what is withdrawal of the ordinances and we have also analyzed that what is re-promulgation of ordinances and we have also seen that ordinance making power is a very emergency power and it cannot substitute the normal law making power of the legislature. Now let us discuss a practice question for your prelims examination. So, the question is consider the following statement. Your statement number one is the decision of the president to promulgate an ordinance can be questioned in the court of law if it is malified. Your statement number two is an ordinance like any other legislation can be retrospective in nature. Your statement number three is an ordinance cannot be issued to amend the constitution. Which of the following statements given above is are correct? Your options are option A is 1 and 2 only, option B is 2 and 3 only, option C is 1 and 3 only and option D is 1, 2 and 3. Kindly drop your answers in the comment box below. Now let us discuss a practice question for your mains examination. So the question is discuss the various issues in the ordinance making power of the presidents and the governors. 
and the safeguards which are in place to prevent the misuse of this power. So, firstly, we will write what is an ordinance. We will write that yes, this is an ordinary law which can bring about legislative changes. You will write the limitations on the power. Okay, then you will write the issues that yes, often they are issued to bypass the legislature. You know, they are often re-promulgated without substantiating the emergency. As per Lok Sabha business rule, you will have to write the uh, statement of purpose when an ordinance is placed before the parliament that what was the necessary circumstance due to which you promulgated an ordinance. So, this often is misused, the ordinance making power is often misused. Okay, so, you will write the issues that yes, there is a bypassing of the legislature and then you can write the safeguards. For example, it will automatically expire at the end of the six weeks or the maximum duration can be six months and then you will write that yes, the President's uh, satisfaction can be called in a court of law if it is malified as per the 42nd, for, sorry, 44th Constitutional Amendment Act. Then you can write that yes, there are certain checks and balances or limitations on the ordinance making power and then you can conclude holistically that yes, this is indeed a very unique power given to us in the Indian constitution by our founding fathers because they were cognizant of the fact that yes, certain circumstances arise in which the there has to be immediate action and that is why they gave this power to the executive to redress those emergency situations and definitely this is a very important power, okay. So, you can conclude very holistically. I hope this session was insightful for you. If you have any feedback regarding this session, kindly drop it in the comment box below. If you liked the today's discussion and found it to be helpful, kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates. Thank you.